Shalom Havarim. Hello, friends. I hope you are having a good, good Friday. Now, it's been my desire for the last couple of years to do more on Holy Week. Um, Holy Week consists of that time from, from uh, Palm Sunday through Easter Sunday, and there's these events, like last night we had this, um, this event called Maundy Thursday when Jesus gave the, the initiative for the, the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup that we call communion, as well as foot washing. Today is Good Friday, the day that we recognize that Jesus was nailed to the cross, that he hung there until he died, and then he was laid in the tomb. So you see, throughout this week, we had this real high point with Jesus coming into the city, this real low point with him being laid in the grave. And then we rise again, just like Jesus rises from the grave on Easter Sunday. So just to capture that, that wave kind of motion, I really want to have a, a, a different kind of virtual church today. What I want to do is I want to read for you what are called the seven words of Jesus. They're not just individual words. They're actually the seven phrases or the seven sayings of Jesus. These are the things that Jesus says while he's hanging on the cross, as recorded in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're short phrases, and what I want to do is I'll read each one individually, and then you're going to get a seven-part sermon. Actually, what we'll do is we'll read each one. I'll give a few words about them. And we'll move on to the next. Let's go ahead and begin with number one. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verse 34, Jesus says, as he hangs on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Now, forgiveness is absolutely central to all of Christianity. We absolutely believe that a central tenet of Christianity is that God forgives us. Grace is abundant and we need it, and I thank God for that. But it's also been a practice in the Mennonite church to not just focus on that, that vertical dimension of, of forgiveness, that God forgives us, but also we forgive one another. Remember that we are called not just to believe in Jesus, we are called to follow him. And Jesus forgave the people who were killing him in the middle of that act. As he's there on the cross, one of the seven last phrases that he utters is to ask forgiveness for those who are hurting him. Number two, Jesus says in Luke's gospel, chapter 23, verse 43, he says to the thief on the cross, he says, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And again, I bring this back to this whole issue with COVID-19 and the coronavirus. We can't escape talking about that. But I know many people are saying we need to get ready for the new normal. We don't know what to expect after this. And I think that's, that's unfortunately true. Things may return to somewhat normal, but we don't really know what to expect. Now, that thief on the cross, there were two of them. And, and one of them mocked Jesus, and the other one kind of hushed that guy and said, Hey, hey, you know who this is? And he asked Jesus, he says, uh, Remember me when you come into your, your home in paradise. Yeah, there's anxiety. These guys know that they've done wrong. And this one simply asks, in the midst of his anxiety of what is to come, he asks Jesus, Remember me. We don't know what's to come but we know that Jesus will be with us. Number three, in Mark 15, 34, as well as Matthew 27, 46, Jesus says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus understood what it meant to be abandoned. Again, think of all the crowd that welcomed him into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, waving those branches and hollering out Hosanna to the highest. They all disappeared. Think about the 12 disciples that Jesus had with him 
throughout his, his preaching career, his ministry, all but one of them was absent there at the cross. One of them was even the one who betrayed him. And now here, as he is in the most vulnerable position he's ever been in, Jesus feels like even God has abandoned him. I think we can all connect with that. We understand what he's going through. We've been abandoned by friends, loved ones, family. And at times we even feel like we're abandoned by God. And the thing I like about this story in the Bible is there's no attempt to explain it away. They just allow that story to stand on its own. Jesus feels abandoned. And we understand that. Number four, Jesus says in John 19, 26 through 27, he says to his mother, Mary, woman, here is your son. Then he says to John, the apostle, here is your mother. All right, this is one of the more difficult ones to make a theological connection to. But when you think about it, Jesus is here in pain. He's suffering. He knows that his end has come. He's ready to breathe his last breath, but what does he do with his last breath, the last bit of energy he has? He looks after those who, care, who he cares about the most. His mother, who would have been a vulnerable person in that community as a widow, he, he asked one of his best friends, John, to look after her for him. Even in Jesus' own position of suffering and pain and vulnerability, he's looking after somebody else making sure his mother is well taken care of. Number five, Jesus says in Luke 22, verse 46, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Now here's the interesting thing, and, and we can apply this again to the situation in the world around us. Jesus has done everything he could do. He spent three years of active ministry traveling around, preaching and teaching, healing people, doing miracles, all sorts of things. Uh, he, he gained followers, probably thousands of followers at some time throughout his ministry. He's done everything he can. And yet, there seems to be more to do. And, you know, we, we've done a lot, I think. Many of us are socially distancing from one another. We're washing our hands and wearing masks and, and avoiding restaurants and large gatherings, and, and we're doing the best that we can. I think what we can gain from this is, is that that's the best we can. We've done all we can do, or maybe we can do a little more, I don't know. But at some point we have to just say, we've done what we can and commend our spirit into God's hands. Say, God, it's up to you. Number six, from John 19, verse 28, Jesus says, I am thirsty. All right, so, so what do you say about that? Actually, I think this is very, very illustrative of, of who Jesus is. It reminds us that Jesus is a human being. And we in the Christian church, we talk about how Jesus was both God and man at the same time and, and exist in that, that, uh, that way. And I, I can't fully understand how that happens. But what we know is that Jesus got thirsty. And we know that Jesus felt pain. We know that Jesus suffered. Because Jesus was a lot like us. Physically like us. And we know that the things that we're going through, whatever they might be, Jesus has been there and experienced that as well. And finally, number seven, in John 19, verse 30, Jesus says, it is finished. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Jesus, what were you talking about? What did you mean? It is finished. Are you talking about your mission? Are you talking about the, the goal to come here and set the world right? To bring people to repentance, to bring grace, to bring forgiveness? Just what is the it that is finished? 
I don't know. And I wonder if Jesus fully comprehended what his own mission was as he walked this earth. I have to think that at some points he seems like he has some limitations to what his understanding is. I'm not sure what it is finished actually means. But what we do know is that Jesus understood that his job here was done. My friends, Jesus' job may be done, but the story is not finished. We're going to leave it right there for tonight with Jesus' last words, the seven last words of Jesus as he hung upon the cross. He gave up his last breath, and they laid him in the grave. Friends, reflect upon these last words of Jesus for these next couple of days. Now I'll check back in with you on Sunday morning, and we'll see what happens. Take care.